Ladies and gentlemen, hello, hello, and welcome to this afternoon webinar. My name is Theo, for those who see me for the first time, and I'm purely here to introduce you to Mr. Paul. And there, there he is. Hello, Paul. Good afternoon, Theo. I hope you're well. I'm very well. Thank you. How are you? I'm good. All good. the better for seeing you, Theo. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> well, so if you, Paul, allow me for just a couple of minutes to go through uh, the, the Admiral's channels and then I'll get back to you and you can you can start your webinar. Yep. Absolutely. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are excited to have Paul with us, as I already said, and I will please make sure you already subscribe and like the videos we upload here on the Facebook, on the YouTube channel. Uh, by using the trading spotlight, of course, you will have access to Paul's recording webinars. Then the Telegram, the, um, uh, that's not the Telegram, that's the Instagram channel. Please make sure you follow the page. Lots of reels, content on a daily basis. It's something new to know and information about the market. And of course, um, one of the channels I use lately a lot and i'm very active it's the telegram i start putting some trading uh, i'm not going to say trading signals but trading um, ideas of how i see the markets all right so during the day during your trading day you can also have a look here you can reply back to the comments and you can ask any questions you may have so, Paul, I will pass it on to you. Excellent. <clears throat> Super. Great. Hopefully you can all uh, hear me. Hopefully you can all uh, see me, everybody. Let's just uh, bring up my uh, slides. That might actually help as well, Mike, for, uh, for today's session. Hopefully everybody can... Uh, oops, here we go. Let's have a go. Great. Thank you for the introduction, Theo. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, great to have you here for uh, for what is session 18. Session 18 already, okay, on our price action trading guide. Uh, and today we're going to be talking about using the weekly chart to your advantage, something I am uh, very keen to talk about, something I could talk about for, uh, what, for the rest of the week, really, in terms of using weekly charts. But uh, sadly, we only have about 40 minutes and stuff, so uh, we'll have to see what I can condense down into our session today. Um, great to have you uh, all here. I appreciate that um, we have a broad range of experience of people who join us for our sessions from complete beginners to people who've been trading for a, a good while. Um, you're all very welcome. It's great to have you here. Um, if you've got questions or comments or thoughts, by all means, please put them in the uh, the chat box. It's um, it's, uh, it's great to have your uh, interaction and see you here. Um, hello, Raquel. Great to have you here, uh, David. Uh, hello there in Hampshire and stuff. I hope you're uh, hope you're all well. It's uh, great to uh, great to have you here. Um, before we uh, dig in, it would be great to know what, if any, uh, what if any use you have had for the weekly chart in the past for your trading. Maybe it's part of your trading skills already. Okay, maybe it's something that's new to you. I, as I said, I appreciate we have complete beginners here. Um, if you've got uh, any experience or comments or thoughts, great. Put it into the uh, chat box. Would uh, really appreciate that. Um, if you're watching this later on demand on the Admiral's YouTube channel. Great to have you here with us. If you've got comments or thoughts, you should be able to put it into the comment box or alternatively, you'll see there's an email address at the end. You can send your comments and questions through and we'll be happy to, uh, to, to work with you and help answer those. So remember, here we are, Admirals, a Forex and CFD broker, global presence, but with local support, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products, allowing you to engage with markets using both MT4, MT5, and the Admiral Supreme Edition as well. If you have any questions about Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative, uh, and they were very happy to help uh, guide you. But, you know, what are we going to talk about here? Well, uh, as I said, I appreciate that there are some people who are complete beginners just starting out on their uh, trading uh, journey, and they might just be trying to understand well, what actually is price action trading. So we always do a little slide there just to help uh, educate the complete uh, new beginners. But 
Um, what we're interested in today is understanding, you know, talking about the weekly chart, all right? Why is that weekly chart so important, all right? What do price action traders need to be aware of? Uh, and how do we utilize it as part of our price action um, trading? Uh, those of you who have joined me on our previous sessions know, you know, we'll quite often talk about weekly charts and have a look at them. Um, I'll do a little bit more of that in uh, depth a bit later on. Um, as I said, I appreciate we have a, a broad range of experience of people who join us for our sessions. You're all very welcome. Um, there'll be something for everybody. But if you have any questions, you can put it into the uh, chat box. Uh, equally, I know these are the English speaking webinars, but I recognize we have a truly global audience who join us here. Uh, and uh, you know, just for, on behalf of myself and everyone at Admirals, great to have you here. OK, wherever you are, we hope you've uh, had a good start to 2023 in uh, what is probably likely to be a rather uh, interesting year in financial markets. And it's uh, great that you're joining us on uh, on the, you know through that uh, journey. And hopefully there'll be some uh, uh, fabulous uh, educational insights and knowledge through our series and also elements that will help you become the best trader you possibly can be, which is what I'd like to see from these particular sessions. So uh, we'll go through that. Then if there's time at the end, we'll have a little look at the live markets and in particular, you know, through weekly charts, not unsurprisingly. Um, uh, and also at the end of it, there will be a little feedback form that comes through. So it'd be great if you stick with us at the end, we'll look at the live charts. You could fill in the quick feedback form. We, you know, we, we appreciate all of the, uh, the, the commentary. Um, you know, if there's thoughts or comments okay or things you'd like to see me cover all right in future sessions by all means put them down into there and be very happy to sort of take that on board i want to make these sessions as useful and as valuable for you as possible <clears throat> so uh, peter says i use it for my analysis but don't trade on that time frame that's uh, great thank you for letting us know that peter thanks for giving us that uh, insight into your own way um you know we'll talk more about it in a uh, in a particular moment for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Paul. I've uh, traded for uh, many years, starting out on hedge funds and uh, trading with clients. Uh, primarily, I look to focus on FX indices and commodities. I tend to be a trend trader for longer term trading, uh, and I tend to do more reversal trading on the uh, sort of shorter time frames. But I will share a bit of elements of that today that you'll be able to sort of uh, hopefully listen to and take away from that. Okay, thank you. So as our slide says, all right, um, you know, this is you know, another one of our sessions in basically helping traders understand and utilize price action in their trading, uh, mainly because appreciate that for new traders, it's very easy to become intimidated by the amount of knowledge, right? It's easy to become overwhelmed by all the information that's available to, to have there with uh, analyzing markets. However, uh, with a little bit of education and understanding, you know, especially how candlesticks are formed and how price action works, well, then it becomes easier to analyze and understand markets. So every Wednesday, we're going to build upon the previous session so that you're educated and informed how to use price action in your trading and also showing you know, variations on how you can uh, utilize it to, uh, to help you with your own particular trading styles. So, you know, um, for those of you who are complete beginners or right, who are joining us maybe the first time, just completely starting out on your trading journey, you know, um, it's great to have you here. What actually is price action trading? It's just a basic means of market analysis where we utilize price movement over time. It's popular with both retail and institutional uh, traders if for different reasons. And realistically, the action is where we're analyzing the change in prices over time. Now, uh, typically what you'll find during our sessions, we will mostly focus on sort of the higher timeframes, price action over the last maybe three to six months, but also maybe over the last couple of years. The reason being for that is that, you know, we appreciate that, you know, a lot of the people joining us for our sessions, uh, you know, they, they maybe not be trading full time, but actually they're trading around a day job or they're trading around you know, running a business or trading around, you know, family and life style commitment so you know they may only have a little bit of time okay on you know, an hour a day or an hour or two at the weekends where in order to be able to conduct the trading so being able to sort of trade the higher time frame so that you do end of day trading or as we're about to discover weekly trading might be actually sort of what uh, is is more useful to it but what i will say is that uh, all of the the concepts and the ideas that i share with you uh, you'll hear me say that you know they are time frame and instrument agnostic they will work across all time frames and across all instruments okay then we want to share it because i do recognize 
that there'll be people here who will, who will happily be investors on a monthly chart uh, and there'll be other people at the other end of the, the spectrum who are trading you know who are trading gold on a five minute chart okay you know now and there is a broad spectrum there's a you know but it's a it's a very broad church we have here but as i say all of the ideas and concepts and thoughts and will work across all time frames and all instruments. They may be more suited for particular instruments or time frames, but generally they will work across all of them. And, and you'll hear me talk about how it's, you know, I share that because I want you to become what I would determine as a, as a versatile trader, namely that you have the ability to, to trade uh, any instrument in any direction on any time frame. If you can do that, if you have the skill set to be able to analyze a market and trade that way, that is a great foundation that's a great base from which you to, to move forward from as a trader yes what will happen is you will probably find that you will specialize a little bit you will find a particular time frames or instruments or setups that that resonate with you that work better for you than than others and that's that's absolutely fine I'm, I'm a big believer in you trading in line with what's you know your personality and character and beliefs um, but, you know, if, if you can have that skill set to be a versatile trader to begin with, that's a great start to your, uh, to your trading careers. So, you know, we have uh, we've covered quite a lot already, OK, in our uh, sessions. We've covered a, a good deal there. Uh, and as I say, we, what I've tried to do is a little bit of the kind of the hard skills and the softer skills. So the harder skills are all, you know, the kind of the, the, the trade setups that people love to see. Things like engulfing candles, star formations, key reversals, pin bars, inside bars, okay, uh, false breakouts. And then even last week, we talked about combining price action setups, which is, um, you know, uh, useful for us, what we'll look at today. Uh, but then also on the soft side element of it, okay, in terms of things like preparing for opportunity, understanding, you know, the importance of routines and checklists, managing risk, okay, building a trading plan for yeah, for yourself, utilizing, you know, how to review your trading in order to improve your performance. These are the kind of soft skill sets, some people might say, that brand new, complete beginner traders sometimes don't realize the relevance of or the importance of. But I can assure you that the longer you trade, the more you will realize that those elements are unbelievably important, enabling you to, to not only perform at a, you know, at a solid, good level, but also evolve and develop your uh, skills and, and abilities as a trader. So here we are today to talk about weekly charts, all right, weekly charts, your advantage. And as uh, I think Peter said there, you know, he basically you know, use them for his analysis, but he doesn't trade off them. Uh, and that's that's fine. That actually is what very often I see with a uh, with an awful lot of uh, of people, and we'll talk more about that, uh, you know, in a, in a slide or two's time. So remember what I was saying is that um, you know, as part of a price action trading, I'll be talked about having a very simple routine, very simple routine. Okay, just to, for new traders, to just make sure you're doing the right thing time after time after time. And what we talked about is that whenever you open a chart, okay, it doesn't matter what it is, gold, Bitcoin platinum, euro dollar, doesn't really matter what it is. First thing you're going to be doing is step one, you're going to be drawing on your levels of support and resistance. We'll start with the monthly, go down to the weekly, down to the daily, all right? Draw them in. those levels of support and resistance. There'll be horizontal levels of support and resistance. There will be probably sometimes clear trend lines or the times there might be big round numbers, okay? Big round numbers, the psychological big round numbers that are important. Draw them in, okay? Build the picture. Step two is, define if there is a trend is there a trend in place on the kind of major those major red time frames why i will say to new traders and you hear me say it week after week after week is that you know good trends will leap off the chart at you right you don't need to force it in fact if anything if you find yourself forcing it it probably isn't a trend and you're probably about to get yourself in a spot of bother good trends leap off the chart at you the problem you have is that markets only tend to trend for about 20 to 30 percent of the time that's the challenge but if there is a trend but well, what we're particularly interested in seeing is step three is well let's see how price reacts at key support and resistance levels so you know at, a, at the most simplest form when trading trends you know we want to be look to be a buyer at support we want to look to be a seller at resistance all right and if we can identify those levels we can see how does price react at those particular levels because what we're looking for is step four is look for some price action triggers at those support resistance levels so simple things like we've touched on engulfing candles pin bars star formations inside bars key reversals price action combinations 
look at that. And then also, and we'll talk about that in a future session, is, is it part of a bigger chart pattern? Maybe it's a continuation pattern, like a flag pattern, or maybe it's part of a reversal pattern, like a head and shoulders pattern. But just be aware of that. Is that there? And can we actually utilize that uh, as part of our bigger trading plan? So Raquel said, uh, used to identify past trends, major support resistance, but not for trading. That's their experience of weekly charts. That's fantastic. Thank you, Raquel. That's great. I really appreciate uh, really appreciate your insight there. Okay, it always helps for me to understand who's in the room and in terms of how they utilize it. Uh, and what we're going to look at is, uh, is that in a little bit more depth now and stuff. So um, what we also said is, you know, what we're going to be touching on and talking a lot about is, you know, what we're going to focus on. So um, when it comes to FX pairs, uh, you'll find me, I will tend to mostly focus on the dollar index and then 28 of the uh, 28 pairs, which are effectively a mix of the major uh, currencies against the US dollar and against each other. You can see them there in terms of the uh, in terms of the FX pairs. It's about 28 of them. There's more. There are actually more than very esoteric ones. And maybe we'll look at one or two of them today on the live markets if we get time. But that's my core. All right. That is that's my core. OK, that I'm looking at. Uh, and also we can look at things like indices, okay, all the major American indices, European indices, Asian indices, we can look at the major commodities, oil, gold, silver, palladium, natural gas, platinum, and, and others based upon what is available to you, you'll find all of these available on the uh, Admiral's platforms, uh, and in equities, well, you know, the, the kind of, let's say the, you know, the, the, uh, sentiment around the fangs has, has perhaps dissipated a good deal uh, over the last year as most of those tech companies have struggled. But nevertheless, they are big, major companies, okay, which are liquid and which trade nicely, uh, and therefore you are know, worth us having a, a look at and stuff. And as I say, so we can, we'll have a look at the fangs, but also personal faiths. But I also recognize that some people also like to trade crypto there. So, you know, there's a bit of a, there's a broad spectrum there, okay, of instruments to trade. As I said, I personally prefer to trade FX indices commodities. But what I also recommend is and recognizes that as a new trader, that might be a bit too much, might overwhelm you. So what I say is, you know, start small, okay, start with one, one set of currency pairs, okay, where you wherever you live in the world. So here I'm based in the UK, so I'd be looking at maybe sterling and how it trades against the, the other majors, okay, that would give me sort of, you know, six or seven currencies to sort of focus on and look at, and that would be a starting point. Or alternative, maybe you like, maybe you like trading equities, and you want to focus on that, tech stocks or something, or maybe you focus on indices. So whilst we've got a broad spectrum here, if it's a bit too much for you, you find it maybe is a little bit overwhelming. It's absolutely fine to just sort of, you know, to, to focus down on, let's say, three to half a dozen sort of ones that particularly speak to you or work with you, okay, or you, you know, you like trading, uh, and, and we can work with that, okay. That's absolutely, that's absolutely fine. So, you know, what does it mean about using the weekly chart to your advantage? Um, you know, well, you know, I've traded for many years. I've traded for both institutions and we're alongside private traders. And, you know, I get to speak to lots of them at conferences and deal with them. OK. Uh, and, you know, what I find is that, um, you know, lots of, let's say, private traders, they would love to be able to trade all day, every day. They would absolutely love it because they enjoy it and are fascinated by it. But the reality of life is that they are constrained by their time availability. So they might have, you know, as we said earlier, they might have work, okay, or a day job. They might be trying to run a business, all right? They may have, you know, family life, all right? They might even be, a, a, as I see increasingly, is that actually they might also be caring for parents, okay? It's not just caring for children, but they might actually also be caring for uh, for parents. So as it says that you know, many people want to trade full time, uh, but the reality is that it, it's not always feasible. As much as you would like to, it's not always feasible. Even even with the technology that we have at you know we have at hand, it's not always sort of the uh, the easiest and most uh, um, feasible thing to to be able to to do. You know, and that's that's understandable. Okay, and and, and what I tell new traders is, is is don't is don't try to fight that. All right, what you don't want is you don't want you you know if you're new to trading, you don't want trading to to sort of you know to become a chore. All right, something that you know you feel that you have to do for six hours every day. Yes, you might love it. Yes, you might want to spend it. Yes, there's also something you can learn at the beginning. But it is about, you know, how do I, how am I able to sort of, you know, uh, you know uh, bring trading into my life and keep it and work at it and, and develop my skills as a trader, as well as all of the other elements that I have going on in my life. And, you know, and, and most of us are like, most of us are like that, okay, there are other, let's say, commitments for our time and energy and resources. 
Well, you know, um, one of the ways we can solve that is that, you know, uh, one of the ideal opportunities that lies within using weekly charts, right? Just charts that each candlestick represents a week of the uh, on that particular market. The reason being is that, you know, we can, one, we can do our analysis in like, you know, a couple of hours at a weekend, right? When, you know, when, which is also for new traders quite can be very beneficial because the markets are closed, right? And actually, so you're not distracted by, you know, by, you know, moves going on at the time. You can actually just sit and, and take your time and do your analysis, right? And you can work out which of your particular trade setups and you have time to work out where your entry is, where your stop loss is, how to position size your trade, where the possible targets, where your possible, you know, uh, trade might run to. So you can take your time over that. And, and sometimes for new traders, who've come from trying to trade like one minute charts because they, you know, they switch on social media and see everybody else is doing that, but find that really, really challenging and difficult. You know, well, this is the other end of the spectrum. Take a bit of time. Okay. Take a bit of time. Enjoy it. Okay. You can sit down with a nice, uh, with a nice coffee on a Sunday morning. Okay. Uh, put a bit of music on and just literally do your analysis, you know, and just take your time. Okay. Enjoy it. Uh, and that what means is that, you know, depending upon where you are in the world, you know, if once you've identified what your couple of trades are, you might be placing your trade on here in the UK or Europe, it might be Sunday night, okay, when your market's open at night or, or Monday morning, your Monday morning, wherever you might be in the world. What you can also do is that, you know, once your trade is set, right, well, then, you know, you, you don't have to, you only have to monitor it very rarely. You, you could actually even leave it till the next weekend. For many traders, that's sometimes the best thing that they can do. And the reason being is because once they, if they're looking at their platform every day and then every minute of every day, well, then invariably, you know, the, the temptation to interfere, you know, which starts to overwhelm new traders who, who have maybe not got the behavior modification in place to, to basically to, um, to you know, ensure that they, you know, plan their trade, trade their plan, or right, they follow their rules. And so it becomes almost like set and forget trading, which, as I said, for some traders, that's actually the best thing they can do. It's the best thing they can do for them, just, you know, do their analysis, identify the trade, set up on the platform, make sure that, you know, it's position size, that the stop losses are in place, and then just let the trade play out. Just leave it. Just leave it. Come back to it next weekend to see how that uh, how that trade works. As it you know, either flies or it dies, you know. And, and for many people, that is actually the best thing. As I said, a just because of their trading personality, but b because they've just got so many other things going on in their lives. You know, we all lead busy lives these days, all right. Uh, and so sometimes this is a way that you know you can have trading as part of your life and build your skills without it becoming a chore, without it being something that you feel that, you know, you have to ring fence, you know, a couple of hours every day to work on. And if you can do that, that's great. But the reality is not everybody can. And so weekly charts can help you. Uh, weekly charts can definitely help you uh, with that. <clears throat> So, um, you know, a, a personal admission of mine is that I, I love weekly charts, okay? Um, and I will, I will share a little story with you about why I love weekly charts. It's from a good few years back now. Um, I actually had, uh, I, I used to be, I used to work for a hedge fund and I used to be a, like an intraday trader. I was a very aggressive intraday trader. Um, but, you know, I would uh, sit at uh, sit at my uh, desk for like somewhere between some 8, 10, 12 hours a day trading away and stuff. And I loved it. But these things always take a toll. There's always a sacrifice. There's a price to be paid. Uh, and actually, what happened was I, I had a I had a major sporting injury. My hamstring and my sartorius muscles and my quadrant uh, quadrant muscles uh, were all really really badly damaged. And as part of the rehab, they what they realised was that I was spending too much time sat at my desk at the edge of my on the edge of my uh, chair. Okay, you know, intraday trading, and that was putting had been putting pressure on my hamstring. Gosh, and it, uh, it was, you know, it, uh, it went and it went badly when I was playing sports. So what actually happened was that um, I had to change the way I operated for a while. OK, whilst I had went through my rehab. And so going from being a boy who traded like, you know, you know, five, one minute, five minute, 15 minute charts, I, I went to trading sort of weekly charts. OK, and and so, you know, I was just took the skill set that I had there to basically sort of looking at weekly charts. You know, we were focusing on them in that time, uh, and I realised actually, you know, that that's where a love affair for me started with weekly charts, because what I realised is that a I'm looking at the big picture, and I, and I I know myself, I am a big picture guy. All right, that's why I like I like understanding the big picture, and the weekly chart becomes a really good anchor chart, uh, as in, you know, I can use that as my anchor, and then I can basically go up to monthly, 
or I can go down all the way to basically execute on it. And certainly things like daily and four hourly charts. And that's that's probably a bit more advanced than we'll go into today. Maybe we'll do that in a in a future session. But also, you know, um, I know that one of my edges as a trader is 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 my ability to, to be patient, to actually to wait for the, the setup to come to me. And with weekly charts, you know, I can see the setup building. All right, I can see the setup building, you know, you're rarely taken by surprise. Whereas, you know, when you're taken by a five minute chart, you know, the, the market can change and you're completely drastically like that. It happens rarely on a weekly chart. So, you know, you have the, the patience to see your, your trade setting up, which allows you to plan and prepare. OK, and, and I feel as if uh, it's almost like I am it's almost like I'm setting an ambush for the market because I can identify where I want to do my business. <laughs> In terms of time management, it's great because I can just do a little bit of time at the weekends and literally put the trades on okay, on a Sunday night or a Monday morning and just let those trades uh, uh, work for them, play out. When you do get a trend, it tends to be a you know a good trend. Okay, it can, you know some of those trends can last for about nine months or so. Okay, and that's a great trend if you can catch. No, no, I'm not going to catch all of it, but even if you can catch a piece of it, that can make for a very good year for your let's say for your swing trading position trading account. Uh, and I also tend to find that there are less false signals when using price action because it takes a lot of time to create a pin bar on a weekly chart. OK, a lot of data has to go into that. You tend to get fewer right, false signals. When you get a good signal, it tends to be a good signal and one worth you know, trading it. The flip side of that is that you're never going to get as many signals. Right? You're never going to get as many signals as you want. You might actually only get a couple of year for one instrument. Right, which is why I'm actually happy to sort of trade those 28 effects pairs, a lot of the indices and commodities, okay, some of the equities, because actually, you know, uh, I'm I'm only expecting to maybe get one or two trades per year for each of those uh, instruments. But together, I can take you know a good bunch of high quality trades that I'm happy to work with. So that's where I'm coming from in terms of uh, in terms of understanding my uh, uh, weekly charts, okay. So, um, uh, Raquel, yeah, there will be a swap fee, okay, especially if things like, you know, sort of FX and such, and you just have to take that into account, build that into your build that into your plan as you go. A lot of that will depend on understanding the kind of interest differentials, you know, uh, and, and that might have an impact on, uh, you know, how big a position size you take on a trade, or even if you only trade in one particular direction on uh, on a certain instrument, all right, based upon uh, certainly in the FX space, okay, those uh, those differentials. But yeah, it's a, it's a good point. It's one you have to take on board, but it's uh, it's not something that um, should uh, prevent you from uh, from you know from engaging in weekly charts. So, um, with that in mind, and we'll 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 look at a couple of examples in a moment. Is that you know how you know how do we look to use a weekly chart? Okay, we'll look at it in in a moment. How do we look to use them? Well. Um, you know, as I kind of said it myself at the, the start, you know, my, my preference is on longer term trading, I, I like to be a trend trader, right, preferably, okay, because um, I think it takes a while for those trends to set up. And when they get going, as I said, certainly in the FX space, it's not unusual, you might get a trend for a good six to nine months. Uh, and that gives you an opportunity to, to build a position to take, uh, you know, a couple of pieces of that, you're unlikely to get the, you know, the, the full stop and start of a trend and, and neither should you really try okay all you're looking to do is get a bit of meat in the middle and that that makes for a good week uh, and i said you know looking to trade with clear weekly trends sometimes just like any other chart sometimes they're not clear and that's fine right? because i'm looking at a good spread of uh, instruments you know if it's not clear on a particular chart well then you can just you can just leave it and, and go away and look elsewhere okay i don't need to make a split second decision as i said i can watch and watch these turns and, and you you get a bit of time to recognize and understand that these these charts are starting to set up so um to, to make it simple okay to, to help newer traders what you can also do is you can use those weekly charts with uh, uh just one simple moving average right you can you'll see i have more in them but I wanted to try and keep it as simple as I can for, for new traders is that you can just utilize a 50 period moving average uh, and look at trading either bounces off that moving average or using the 50 period moving average as a flip, right? As we flip from the old trend to the new trend, which I'll I'll share a little bit more in uh, yeah, in a few uh, in a few moments' time. 
You can still use a uh, weekly chart for reversal trend. And I'll show you what I mean by that is that, you know, is that's where you see that the, the trend that has been going is, is deeply overextended. OK, and there is a clear reversal pattern, not just because not just because it's not just because it's been going in one direction for a while. You know, you don't sort of sort of try and call the top in it. But if, as I said, if the trend is over, um, is overextended in ways I'm looking at. And there is a very clear reversal pattern, which, you know, we will talk more about in, in other future sessions. That is a way for um, that is also a way to sort of, you know, to, to trade reversals. But as I said, uh, you know, I'm more likely to focus on, on trends when you can find them or when there's a good when there's a good trend there. Um, so, uh, yeah, for those of you joining me for the first time who are new to trading, well, you know, what you will see on my charts, okay, yep, drawing in levels of support and resistance, as you know, as we talk about in our steps. But equally, you know, I have um, uh, three simple moving averages, a, a blue 20, uh, a red 50, and a green 200. Um, uh, you know, uh, yes, they can help to just confirm that there is a trend, uh, but also I find them very useful for identifying levels of moving support and resistance, dynamic support and resistance. You'll find that, you know, it's always fascinating to see how uh, how markets, how price will, okay, react around certain particular moving averages. None of them are perfect, all right? None of them, there's no perfection, okay? You know, I go to trading conferences and you'll find, you know, there'll be people in a tech analysis conference room and they'll, you know, there'll be people arguing with each other about the, how the, you know, the 50 period EMA is is, is better than the 65 period uh, uh, weighted moving average, which is not as good as the 30 period moving average, et cetera. Um, you could spend your whole life, all right, fighting to try and find, you know, the perfect moving average. And I don't believe there is one. What we're looking to do is just to utilize major ones that are seen by most people that have the most eyes on them because actually we're looking at them how how does the market react to them okay and how market reacts and that in itself can provide us with trading opportunities and that's that's all I'm, yeah, that's all i'm looking for so um let's talk about the 50 period moving average bounce right and uh, this is really about you know once we've identified the you know price in the trend how does price react when it comes back to the 50 period moving average and I'll, I'll show you a couple of examples of it all right and what i'm looking for is is for price to bounce off that 50 period moving average in a good strong trend and i'm looking for rejection candles okay or pin bars or engulfing candles at that 50 period moving average and i'm looking to trade in the direction of the existing trend New traders, okay, what you're looking to do is enter on the break of the candle in the direction of what we're looking to trade with our stop above the other side of the candle, right? And we're looking for, you know, as always, a multiple reward to risk. Now, um, uh, what I tend to like to do is, you know, on, on longer term trading, okay, on weekly charts, I like to try and run the trade, okay? So, you know, we might have a uh, trailing stop, which could be something as simple as a three bar trailing stop if you wish to do that, or even just trailing behind swing points or trailing behind fractals themselves and you just keep it simple we remember we want this to be a very simple almost kind of like you know very limited in terms of time requirements or right? maybe a couple of hours of the weekend that you could work with but that's what we're that's what we're particularly looking at i think i've got a couple of examples and we'll and of course we will uh, look at the uh, live markets as well you know we'll, we'll move show over there in a moment you know but you know let's get the old drawing tool um yeah, you know, this is a weekly chart. Price had been in a long downtrend. Price had pulled back to the red 50. Uh, you know, and we can see here, the first time it comes up to it, it can't close above it. That itself is telling us something. The, the, the next week is, you know, that's like a, a spinning top. It's an indecision candle, right? The market's deciding, I, I, you know, are we, uh, you know, you know, have we run out of energy? This little pullback, has it run out of energy? And then we get this candle here, the next one, which is a, it's, a, it's an engulfing candle. It's a rejection candle. It's a pin bar candle. It is a key reversal candle. You know, you'll hear me talk about, you know, the confluence of events, right? This all's happened by the 50 peer moving averages. Also this level of resistance, which we've drawn in, the market's turning, okay? The market's turning. And as I said, for new traders, for new traders, what we'd be looking to do is to enter, okay, you have an order to enter just beneath the um, the low of the candle with your stop loss above the high. Now, one of the, the, the challenges for a weekly candle is that candle can be very, very big, okay, that candle can be very big. But on the flip side of that, is one of the elements we have these days, which you have access to with Admirals, is that, you know, we can trade in terms of micro lots, all right, rather than 
when I first started trading many years ago, back in the day, you know, you only had standard lots was, you know, was the smallest position size, all right? Whereas now, just because of the, the nature of the, the development of the um, of the, the industry and what brokers provide and what AdLoss provide clients, you can trade with, with micro lots, okay? So you can trade a much, much smaller, um, much smaller position size. If you're an advanced trader, okay, you'll understand there are ways to actually sort of, you know, uh, increase your, uh, you know, your entries, okay, and your stop losses. But for new traders, you're just looking for that, looking for a way and a means to basically, you know, when it's going to bounce off there, look to trade the break of the uh, of the candle, stop loss the other side, and as I said, look to sort of trade the, uh, try and run the trade, okay. And, and you're in this particular case, you can see that actually, even just for that, what was that for? For one, two, three, four, even for the next five weeks before we got a, you know, before we got a, uh, you know, a kind of a, uh, a little bit of a bounce there, right? Now that was a big move down there, and that's what we're looking for. As I said, you know, you get less false signals, and when you do get a good trend, you know, it can, it can run for you very, very nicely. Okay, so you might have, in terms of your trade risk, in terms of your pips at risk, might be, you know, much bigger than you're normal used to if you're if you're trading, you know, five minute charts. But the flip side is when you get a good trend the opportunity to generate good asymmetric reward to risk ratio trades that also changes as well um so you know this is what's well, so this is an example on you know this is on yeah this on uh, uh cvx which is that uh chevron the the uh, uh the uh, oil company okay uh so uh, you know you can see here that what i'm looking remember i've got the, the 50 period moving average here and we can see that price came down to it here and price was price was bouncing off it okay you know it went underneath it started that week underneath it but it finished it as a big engulfing candle which was the start for the trade to basically to move its way up now remember what i was saying is that i like to see when price starts to get overextended as it is here price has become quite a good way overextended from the 50 period moving average is that you know what i normally suggest is that you know or see is that price will pull back to it okay once it's got overextended that's what i'm saying just because it's been going in one direction for a while doesn't mean i just you know i you know reversal trade it what i need to say is invariably is that you know it's overextended okay it's been you know the, the trend is a little bit uh, old uh then we get some good price action but what we can see is that the price actually it falls back and but what does it do well it actually you know it rejects the 50 period moving average and has you know a good bounce off there comes back down again okay and here it effectively you know it looks like it's uh, rejecting it again before it bounces before it bounces again all right now <clears throat> there are there are little let's say there are little savvy little ways to to effectively to to be able to uh, sort of to trade that what you know you can do in particular case of is you know looking at towards the end of the week okay you might you know if you're getting a candle that is uh, looking at setting up you know, you know, if you have the time, looking at uh, what would be, you know, towards the end of the US session, all right, okay, on a Friday evening, there might be an opportunity to to get a little bit uh, ahead of the crowd. But, you know, what I say is, I normally say, save that for, save that for the kind of, let's say, the, uh, uh, the more advanced traders. What we're looking for is, you know, it has there been a trend, has price pulled back to that 50 period moving average? You know, and the, why interest in the 50? As a general rule, just use the 50 as it is kind of like fair value. All right. It's fair value, you know. And in this case, the price is in a nice uptrend, right? So we know it's been in an uptrend. Price is overextended, it pulls back and it bounces. And we can see, you know, it bounces a couple of times there before it um, before it you know gets itself into its a uh, longer term trend. Um, <clears throat> the other side, so that's a bounce, okay, you know, just uh, looking at the weekly chart for bounce, the other side is a flip, uh, and this is where we're seeing how price reacts at the 50 period moving average um, when it's been retraced after a trend, and what we're looking for here is where is that last time we're looking for price to bounce off it, now we're looking, well, does price trade through that 50 period moving average, which is normally a, a strong level of dynamic support resistance, you know, does it break through and close the other side, does it hold the other side of that 50 period moving average? Does it even like sort of just go from support to resistance and flip its way? And in which case, what we're looking to do is to trade in the direction of the new trend, right? New trade is where you enter on, on a, the breaker level or a retest, retouch of the 50 period moving average. As always, trade never trade with stops, trade behind you know, the, either the, the recent high or the recent low, depending on the direction. Uh, and once again, you know, what I normally suggest is trail your stop loss on the swing point. So uh, um, I, I don't actually even know what instrument this is. It doesn't matter. It's a weekly chart. Of price had been in a very long downtrend. Uh, remember what I was saying is that actually price reversed here. Okay, price reversed its way there. Uh, and 
rallied its way up to the 50 and, and where it looked initially like it might bounce off it okay what actually happened is a couple of weeks later it, it you know the 50 has started to turn the price not only rallied up but it closed the other side of 50 and, and that's what becomes useful to us understanding the closes on on weekly charts it closed above the 50 the next week okay it maintained okay above the 50 the next week it looked like oh people might say well you know there's a pin mark a rejection candle but the 50 is still acting as support and it's closed above it and then we're getting an inside bar we're getting a couple of inside bars okay bullish inside bars the next week what happens is prices flip price comes down connor will see it tests the 50 and then bounces up off it again before that trend has continued there so prices flipped around the 50 okay whereas in in a bounce we're looking for it when we very clearly bounces off it in an existing trend here you know you've had a reversal pattern followed by you know a maneuver to the uh to the 50 and then actually the 50's got the other side of the 50 and stayed the other side which is telling us that actually in this particular case you know the bulls are in control and now we're into a we're into a new trend okay on the uh, on the bullish side so uh, what is it? This is cable. All right. So um, this is a cable on the weekly chart. It'd been, it had been an uptrend and it came back all the way down to the 50. And it bounced off it. But what we saw was actually the 20 was starting to squeeze in. It was basically what we saw as price was squeezing its way here until invariably what happens is it gets beneath the 50. OK, the price has flipped. It comes back to retest it. Hopefully you can see how it retests that red 50 there. And we've got rejection candles before we see price come down for the next six weeks price pulled back up what happens is remember it comes up and touches the 50 you can't basically get above it then puts an inside bar and what happens is we start to maneuver our way down all the way down okay and you can see that that was actually a long trend we've become overextended here right earlier in the year over early in 2022 and then invariably what we saw was that basically we had a reversal pattern there price rallies up to the 50 it looks like it's going to bounce but you know what we're wary of is that we're just sat above the 120 you number, know, a big round number. And remember, we said the start is why we draw them in. And actually, what happens is price comes back down, test, and then we get above the 50, and then we're staying above the 50. Okay, so you know, as a as a as a weekly trader, you'd be looking to say, you know, is this going to stay above the above the 50? In which case, well, then that's probably an indication that you know we might get a um, we could get a longer term sort of move up to the next big round number, which is about 130. So. You know, you've you've got you know flips, then bounces, okay, then a, a bounce, which becomes a flip, all right. And you know, that's over a fifteen month period. There's only like you know four or five up, you know opportunities there. You know, so you don't have to, you know, you don't have to sit there on the edge of your seat like I oh, was a hedge fund, okay, watching. You can do this at the weekend. You can look at it. You can see it. You can see it set up. You can build a picture, and you can be looking at other instruments as well at the same, at the same time. Uh, what we have this is exxon okay energy company um and i was interested in this because um you know what we saw was is how the price reacts around that 50. we can see that you know once it's beneath it it went to a trend it comes up here what does it do it bounces off the 50 comes back up bounces off the 50 gets a bit close to it but doesn't go but then we see it really drops here it really drops here you know and this becomes you know a very big reversal pattern a big double bottom pattern there okay big double bottom pattern there and then what actually happens is price rallies up here it looks like it might flip uh, sorry it looks like it might bounce but it's you know it's not a pin bar there okay it's just you know a little bit of a, a red candle and then what happens what do we see is price basically flips doesn't it it flips at the 50 comes back up retests and then we're off into this new trend we're off into the new uptrend you see price comes back as a flag pattern and then what we can see is it bounces off the 50 there right with a big bullish engulfing candle comes back down bounces off it again and we can see that it's actually it's coming down is it is it in that that is you know effectively a two-year trend there all right two-year trend after the end uh, after you know after a big double bot reversal pattern so as i said you know that that chart could be a five minute chart but it's not it's a weekly chart it's actually over what about four years or so so as i said you can take your time all right you can take your time to 
to, to watch this trade play out, to set up, okay? You don't need to, as I said, be sat there. You can take your time. You can watch it. You can, you get time to recognize, okay, you know, when price is going to come back to the, to certainly to the 50, and then you can really just get ready to, to do it, you know. Now, of course, once you're into trends, there might be ways to just join and, you know, build positions, okay? But today, all we're just interested in is, you know, can I use the weekly chart, okay? Can I just, you know, find a simple way to, to trade the 50, you know, to trade the weekly chart, just utilizing, you know, a simple 50 period moving average and price action and how I could use that as just the basis of a very, very simple, very, very simple sort of, you know, weekly trading um, trading plan. Uh, this is Kiwi dollar against the uh, Kiwi dollar against the US dollar, you know, into the 50, uh, into the weekly chart. And what we can see is, you know, uh, price is in a very clear downtrend. Price pulls back to the 50s, as we discussed before. It can't get above the 50. Remember the flip, it's getting the other side. Here it doesn't. And then it basically prints this big engulf, a big engulfing um, key reversal, all right, rejection candle pimba before actually what happens is the really big strong trend there all of last year remember what I was saying is your know, price has gone vertical it's overextended here and then actually on lower time frames it puts in a reversal pattern and what we see is price actually you know rally all the way back up to the 50 and what we see here is price look how price closes above the 50 so your initial thought is well maybe it has the energy to, to you know to carry on but then what we see is you know the next week all right it's tried to push down it can't it closes above it the week after, you're probably getting a bit nervous because you're thinking, well, Paul, that looks like, you know, bearish you know, bearish uh, rejection kind of pinball. We can expect it to go down. Paul, I'll be saying this, you know, it's still closed. It's still closed above the 50. It still couldn't close. You know, the next week you do and you start to think, right, OK, actually, I'll be looking to sort of trade, you know, the break of that as effectively as, you know, as a, as a bounce continuation. But what we see is that the very next week, it's bullish inside bar that's closed above the 50 closes next week close above the 50 close above the 50 close above so actually you know it, you know it is a little bit of a little few shenanigans on there for a week or two but i said you don't have to you don't have to sort of race to make your decision you can watch and see how this um, develops and what we've seen there is you know there's a flip going on and now i'd probably say you know, we probably rally its way up to the 200 period moving average uh, over the next couple of weeks there on the uh on the, the kiwi dollar so we've got a little bit of time and I want to switch to across to the charts, all right, um, is that bit of homework for you, all right? Go through your favorite instruments on the weekly chart. How long did the trends continue for? When you see a trend, how long did it go for? Was it six weeks or was it six months? Was it very clear trends? Could you have actually, you know, found ways to sort of join that based upon the, the, the elements we've taught and looked at even in the previous sessions? You know, how did the, how did the trends, how did the price react to the 50 period moving average? Did it bounce off it, okay, which would give you a chance to join the trend, or did it flip around there, which gives you a chance to join the, the, the new trend? Did it provide good trading opportunity? So just take that way, just you know, open a few charts, random charts, even, and just go through and have a look at that on the weekly chart. And you might be surprised at, you know, at the kind of the, uh, the opportunities that it, uh, that it presents yourself there. So before we switch across to the charts, just remember price action is a way of analyzing markets using purely price action. We're looking at price action triggers at significant price levels, prices or zones. It uh, allows us to build a very simple price action trading plan. The weekly chart can be a secret weapon in price action trading because it allows us to trade with limited exposure in terms of, you know, we're not, uh, we're not just trading all the time, all day, every day, and limited time requirements if we've got, you know, very busy lives. We can trade utilizing the 50 period moving average to help identify bounces and flips on that kind of weekly time frame. But as always, it's important to amp your analysis and manage our risk. So let's have a, we might overrun one or two minutes, but we'll just have a quick look at uh, on them on live markets. Before we do that, just remember, ladies and gentlemen, come and join us next Wednesday. We'll do a soft soft uh, topic there in terms of how to grade our trade setups, right? which new traders may not understand, but I guarantee it will help you improve as a trader. Talk about why is it important? How can you do it best? How can you use it to help improve your trading? At two o'clock London time next Wednesday, 8th of February, come and join us. As always, if you want to contact Admirals, you can do there, okay? You, you can uh, do them on the contact details there. And of course, this will be on the Admirals YouTube channel and also on the Admirals Facebook channel. So um, hopefully that's a bit useful. So we've got a couple of minutes. Let's just switch across to the charts, shall we? Just uh, have a little look for the last minute or two just to, just to do that. So just bear with me one second. We'll just bring this 
over and switch across so we can have a little look at the um, let's just there we go super so um yeah, I hope you can uh, hope you can see me. Hope you can still uh, hear me. So um, I was just looking at here just before here. You know, as I said, this is this is my dollar profile, right? Dollar profile. Lots of all the uh, the dollar charts here. Okay, um, we had a look at there, didn't we? On uh, sort of Kiwi dollar, was looking at as a flip. Um, we looked at pound against dollar. Had it done a uh, had it done a flip? If I look at Aussie dollar on the weekly chart. Um, Aussie dollar on the weekly chart. You know, we had a. You know, there's been some real moves there. Okay, and, you know, some real bounces off the 50 okay it flipped here and then it got above before it then basically finished it and ran its way down but as it comes back pin bar falls back here it overextends it's overextended on the weekly chart and actually in the lower time frames there's some very nice uh, uh reversal patterns there but what we can see is price came all the way back to the 50 this time what's it done that week it went all the way through the 50 and closed above it you know that's thinking right is there a flip in place Next week, we can see price comes back down to the 50, but it closes the week above it. And then we saw Bosch, you know, last week, it rallied its way up from there, okay? So as I said, you know, that has flipped through and that's sort of giving us an indication of, you know, a continuation in that trend. So we, that's what we'd be looking at as, as a way of means of looking to join that on that uh, on that particular uh, on that particular case there. Um, looking at on here, uh, what we've we got here, dollar cad, let's, um, here, dollar cad has been interesting, all right, just, you know, it's probably a little bit outside remit of what we talked about, but it's interesting to look at us in terms of the, the weekly chart, namely because what we can see is the 50 period moving average. I want you to see how, you know, the price reacts to it, okay? You know, most at the start of last year, the 50 period moving average was acting as support. Price was bouncing off that 50 period moving average. Every time it came down to it, it bounced off it, then it? Sometimes it might not necessarily be pretty, might not necessarily be absolutely clear cut, but you know, here there was, you know, there was a pin bar there, the pin bar engulfing candle there, there was an engulfing candle reject, uh, key reversal candle there. You know, it, it support was happening there before it broke that big round number at 130, and we can see it bounced off. And now it's overextended, isn't it? It's done a, uh, you know, there's a one, two, three pen. And now what you'd be looking at as a trader, or if you're a weekly trader, you'd be looking at, well, all right price comes down to the 50 what does it do when it gets there does it bounce like it has done or does this time does it slice through because the flip has occurred and we're running down to 130 so that's how the way you can start to build a scenario plan and and watch it play out you know and if it doesn't work well you just change it you know you just change your plan okay based upon what the market's doing but you know you can you can work with that quite uh quite easily quite simply um what have we got here i think i've got dow jones here so Dow Jones looking at that, okay, this is the weekly chart. We had been in a great uptrend where the, the 50 had acted as, you know, as basically support. And then we had a flip going on, okay? You know, and it wasn't pretty, you know, it was a bit people, but then ends of long big trends sometimes aren't pretty. But once we had price move down, what happens is it pulls back to the 50 and puts in a bounce candle here, put, followed by a really big bounce candle before we had the big bear trends, all right? Then we get, a, uh, it's overextends, puts in a double bottom there, rise up to the 50 there. What does it do at the 50? Puts in a very clear bounce, okay? Very clear pin bar off it before we drop down again. All right, now we've uh, rallied all the way back. Yes, there's a red candle there, but it's not a rejection candle, okay? It's not, it's, not, it's not a great pin bar like this one here or this one here. And then actually the next week, what happens? Look at that, bang, goes all the way through and it's flipped, all right? And it's closing and it's flipping. And it comes back down and it bounces off. So whereas you know, we've, once we've flipped, it's no surprise for it to come down and bounce its way off. Okay, uh, you know, and that gives an indication of you know people have had that kind of risk on mentality, that, that kind of like that um, that excitement about that over the uh, over the last couple of uh, of weeks, or certainly since the start of um, 2023. Okay, so now it's just like very quickly weekly charts there, just looking at um, just looking at that there, just looking at those weekly charts. Okay, very very quickly. Something you can do at weekend it doesn't take very long, all right? You can very quickly look and see if there's something to do or if there is nothing to do and very often. There won't be anything to do. But if you've got, you know, time constraints, all right, you know, there might be something that you could do at a weekend to just effectively keep you developing, keep you working as a trader and develop your skills and also give you engagement without having to uh, have a sort of, you know, real commitment in terms of times.
So uh, we ran over there a little bit. Apologies, I'm just trying to share as much as I can. We'll do an extra session on this in a month or two's time, okay, looking at uh, other elements of it. But uh, I hope you found that useful. I hope that's given you a bit of food for thought uh, in terms of how you could look at the weekly chart and how it could be very beneficial and helpful to you as a, uh, as a, as a trader. Uh, and as always, okay, I just I wish you the very best of success with your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. And I look forward to speaking to you soon. Trade well, everybody. Cheers.